Scary Recaps presents The Void. Beware of spoilers. The movie begins with a scene in the farmhouse showing the bloody lower half of a body. James and a woman want to run away from the farmhouse and run into the forest. James was successful, but the woman suffers a gunshot from Vincent and Simon. She cries in pain while lying on the ground. Simon poured gasoline on the laying woman while Vincent is lighting up his cigarette. He throws it at the woman and her body burns. Vincent and Simon left the farmhouse, unaware of a person wearing a long white cloak with a black triangle mark on the face area who appeared to see everything. An on-duty sheriff, Daniel, sitting in his patrol car parked beside the highway was contacting one of his co-sheriffs until he saw an injured James coming out of the woods. Daniel thought that James was just a drunk teenager, but when he came near, he carried James and rushed him to the hospital. While driving, Daniel was contacting his fellow police officers about a nearby hospital for James. James was severely injured. Daniel decided to bring him to Marsh County Memorial Hospital, a local hospital with only a few patients. It has been largely abandoned due to a fire incident. Because of the incident, the working staff works as a skeleton crew. When Daniel carried James inside the hospital, Alison, Daniel's ex-wife, was working. Together with a nurse named Beverly, they helped Daniel put James on a stretcher. In the receiving area, behind Daniel, Ben, with a teenage pregnant patient named Maggie, were sitting. In one of the rooms, the intern nurse, Kim, was studying and looking at Cliff, one of the admitted patients, who were in the recovery stage. When Cliff is about to sleep, Kim leaves. While waiting, Daniel heard that James was acting frantically. Dr. Richard Powell injected a syringe into James's arm while Beverly and Allison were restraining him. Eventually, he calmed down. While observing James, Allison saw some forced injection marks on his arm. In another room, Daniel was removing the bloodstains in his uniform until Allison came in and handed him a cup of coffee. Dr. Powell interrupted their conversation and said that James was already stable and reminded Daniel about the passing of his and Allison's child. Dr. Powell related Allison's emotions to how he felt when he lost his daughter, Sarah. When Daniel was walking through the hospital, he saw Beverly in Cliff's ward. He approached, thinking that she was just checking him, but he saw her stabbing Cliff's eyes with medical scissors. Some of her skin on her face was peeled. Beverly continues to peel it off. She was about to attack Daniel, but he shot her. The other staff in the hospital rushed to the area of the gunshot. Allison and Kim saw the dead bodies, then Dr. Powell came. Shocked and afraid of what he saw, Daniel left the room, wanting to call a detective. He then went to the comfort room and threw up. While in the comfort room, his vision became blurred. He had a seizure before collapsing. While unconscious, nimbus clouds appeared, a dark area opened, a piece of beating flesh was shown, and a dark triangle vessel in the sky. Then Dr. Powell and Allison found him. Mitchell, a state trooper, came to the hospital to collect James and question him about the bloody murder scene in the farmhouse. Daniel looked for a landline telephone and eventually went to the patrol car to inform the other police officers about Beverly's death. There was no signal at all. Then he saw a man wearing a long white cloak with a black triangle shaped drawing. Daniel called out to him, but he didn't respond. Suddenly the hospital lights turned off and the man in the white cloak rushed towards Daniel holding a knife and stabbed him near his shoulder. After the encounter with the man in a white cloak, Daniel went back to the hospital. Meanwhile, Beverly's dead body was transforming. Back to Daniel, Allison was putting a lot of pressure on Daniel's wound. Allison ordered Kim to apply pressure on Daniel while she was heading to grab some tools and antibiotics for him, but Daniel lost consciousness again. 
Then, a dead body was shown in the morgue, covered by a clean, white blanket. Was shown the beating flesh, the dark vessel in the sky, and an awakened, dead body. Daniel lost lots of blood, and everyone saw a mob of cultists who were surrounding the entrance of the hospital, facing them. No one in the hospital knew what they were doing there. Suddenly, James screamed, and Mitchell and Daniel went to investigate. In the room, they saw James being handcuffed to the stretcher and Beverly's monstrous dead body. Mitchell tried to shoot the monster, but it only continued to grow. Daniel detached the handcuffs from the stretcher and pushed James outside the room. He and Mitchell slowly walked backwards and closed the door behind them. James grabbed a scalpel while Daniel grabbed the emergency axe. Simon and Vincent came into the hospital with a long gun, pointing it at James. James took Maggie as a human shield. Daniel was telling everyone to calm down. Dr. Powell wants James to let go of Maggie, but James stabbed Dr. Powell in the neck. Ben, Maggie's uncle, punched James, and the Beverly monster escaped the closed room and took Mitchell. The creature's tentacles pierced Mitchell's body. Vincent lost the bullet from his rifle while Simon stabbed it with an axe. Then, the monster was growing another sprout from its body. Simon continually hits the creature with an axe, then Vincent shoots the creature, which dies. Then, Vincent and Simon threaten Maggie and hit Daniel instead. After threatening Maggie, Daniel laid his body on the floor while Vincent was about to hit him with an axe, but Allison prevents him and he pushes her aside. Simon was fighting Vincent, while Daniel intervened by putting himself between Vincent and Allison. Allison told Vincent that Maggie will be giving birth that night, and they also don't want to be killed by the cultists outside. It was only Kim, Allison, Maggie, Ben, Daniel, Vincent, Simon, and James who were left. Maggie was sitting in a chair while Ben was comforting her. Kim and Allison were preparing the delivery of Maggie's baby. Allison and Kim prepared a room for the labor and delivery of Maggie while Ben worked to support her. Daniel, Simon and Vincent teamed up to go outside of the hospital to the patrol car to grab some guns and bullets. Back to the hospital, Maggie begins to feel labor pains. Allison let Kim take charge of her because she will be grabbing supplies for the delivery as well as antibiotics for Maggie. Back to Daniel's team, they've encountered the cult who wore long, white cloaks with a black triangle shape in the face area. Vincent shot and killed one of their members. The three hurriedly retreated to the hospital. Daniel asked where Allison is. Ben answered that she had grabbed some antibiotics for Maggie. Kim said that she went to the med room. Daniel suddenly became worried for her and followed her together with Vincent. Daniel has left already and the two didn't notice the corpse of Dr. Powell was missing. Daniel and Vincent went to the area where they encounter a tentacle creature and grabbed the pistol, dripped in sticky blood and went straight to the medical room. The two were keenly observing their surroundings but they don't find Allison. Then, they heard a landline call from the morgue, and it was for Daniel. The voice came from an old man, telling Daniel that he knew about their past and showing him some pictures of the past. They also saw notebooks that contains images of rituals and the images needed for it. They went back and gave Kim the things they needed for Maggie and informed her, Ben and Maggie, that they'll be looking for Allison. Kim was panicking but eventually agreed to their plan. Simon, Vincent and Daniel interrogate James to spill what he knew about all of this. James spilled that Dr. Powell was the leader of a cult and it was a sex cult with human sacrificing as part of their ritual. Then the three brought James with them and went to the damaged area of the hospital. Kim was asking them to stay close, dictating where they should enter. Allison regained consciousness and found herself lying on a stretcher with Dr. Powell turned away. Back to Daniel, they entered a room where they saw a triangle figure drawn on the floor 
and a door with a black triangle drawing and went inside. Dr. Powell injected something in Allison's stomach and it was visibly growing and grumbling. Meanwhile, Daniel, inside the door with the triangle drawing, saw many decaying corpses and it looks like those bodies were slaughtered. The four were disgusted about what they see and smell. Some bodies were hanging, some were on the floor, and the others were in a stretcher. Back to Kim, she administered anesthesia to Maggie and saw that her dress was now covered in blood. Kim was now looking at her book, looking at how to perform a C-section. Maggie lost consciousness. Back to Daniel, they heard a baby crying sound and some bodies were moving and a monster was awakened. Kim was now full of fear because it was her first time performing a C-section. Ben keeps motivating her to proceed, but suddenly Maggie stabbed Ben and admitted to Kim that the baby she was carrying was Dr. Powell's child. Then the cultist members went inside the building and were waiting for Maggie to go with them while Kim hid. Back to Vincent, Simon, Daniel and James. Simon was looking at the wall of a house and saw hanging pictures. Behind him was Vincent, blaming him for not protecting his mother. It was an illusion. Simon lighted up a flare and stuck it towards Vincent to get him back to his senses. After that, Simon immediately grabbed the rifle and points it at Vincent. At the hospital, Kim was hiding in a locker while a member of the cult was lurking inside the hospital, holding an axe. Daniel was now near the operating room where Allison was laid. Going inside, he saw Allison and heard Powell's voice, reiterating about their past. Daniel realized that it was just his wife's mutated remains. It appears to be the tentacle creature that came from her body. Then Daniel began to cut those tentacles with the axe he had. Daniel was transferred into a morgue room with a glowing triangle in the front wall. Powell's voice told him that he found the skill to control life and death. Powell promises Daniel to bring back the life of his child if he is willing to die first. Maggie appeared from behind and stabbed Daniel. Daniel went near to one of the corpses that was covered with a white blanket and Maggie went near to the glowing triangle. Powell, in his skinless body, had mutated in front of the glowing triangle. Maggie kneeled in front of Powell, then Powell told Daniel to look for the ritual. Powell recited chants in front of the glowing triangle and it slowly moved. Then nimbus clouds appeared and a vision of a monster with a human skull was shown. Maggie was seeking the blessing of the baby until Powell touched her skin and Maggie screamed in fear. She suddenly felt something in her baby and it was rumbling wildly. Then her torso exploded. Lots of blood was scattered about the room and the Sarah creature was born. It was a creature coated in disease, decaying flesh and tentacles. It has a skull-like face and knuckles like a gorilla. It pulled Maggie's corpse, but Vincent shot it. He continued to shoot it, but Sarah creature uses its tentacles to make Simon and Vincent stumble. Simon tried to cut the tentacle, but it didn't help. Vincent again shoots Sarah creature in the head, but it was now trying to control his body through tentacles. Vincent poured isopropyl alcohol into the monster and his body and signaling Simon to light up a flare. Simon was hesitant at first, but eventually did it to kill Sarah creature, but also at the sacrifice of Vincent's life. He managed to escape the area after burning the monster and Vincent, but Powell was continuing the chant in front of the triangle. Then the dark triangle vessel appeared, then goes back to Powell. Daniel stabbed him using the axe. Powell promises that he can be with Allison again if he will stop resisting and will go with him. But still, Daniel refuses, but Powell took him and they both ended up in the void. Back to the Sarah creature, it was still looking for Simon, but he was teleported back inside the hospital and reunited with Kim. In the void, Daniel and Allison reunited, looking at the pyramid vessel 
being covered by the nimbus clouds while holding hands. <laughs>